Hello viewers, welcome to taking you through the story of A Level Physics Paper 2. And this video, we're going to go through the part of under capacitors, and that is energy stored in a charged capacitor. So, this video is still for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So, before we start, let's first look at the course outline for physics paper 2. Now, physics paper 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from these topics, and a student must answer one. The next part is physical optics, or what we call waves. Also, two questions come from these topics, and a student must answer one. The next part is electrostatics and electricity, where three questions come from these two, three topics. And the last part is magnetism and SC, where three questions come from these topics. So, a student is expect you can choose, it is you to choose, you can either choose to answer two here and one here to make the five questions, or you answer two here and one here to make the five questions, which are needed. So, previously we have been dealing with capacitors with electrostatics. And now we are on capacitors. Uh, we already covered part one of the calculations, which is capacitance of a parapet capacitor. Now we shall cover part two, which is energy stored in a charged capacitor. But complete notes are available in this book called Mastering Level Physics Paper 2. So it has clear notes, worked examples, and trial questions on all the parts of Physics Paper 2. But our emphasis on this YouTube channel will be the worked examples found inside this book. So now we can start our topic, energy stored in a charged capacitor. So we shall need to derive the formula for the energy stored. So you shall suppose that you suppose the PD between the capacitor plates at some instant was V and positive CHU was the charge on the positive plate, that is plate A as shown below. That means we need to make an illustration. So this will be the PD between the capacitor plates, and these are the plates, plate A and plate B. They told you that plate A has a positive charge, and it depends on the polarity of this dry cell. If you interchange, then it cannot be correct. So the one which is the positive part of the dry cell will be connected, will make this charge possibly plate possibly charged. So when you are labeling the charges, these charges you must be mindful of also the arrangement of this battery or dry cell. So at any stage of charging, V is equal to Q over C. So this is a rearrangement of the formula we saw in the previous video because we saw that Q is equal to CV. That means that if I want to make V the subject, I'll take this C this side to give you Q over C. So a graph of voltage against its charge will be as shown below. So I need to illustrate on the graph. So those are the axes. Then we shall draw the graph. It will be a linear one with a positive gradient. And imply that when PD is V, charge is true. And when PD is increased by a small change in V, charge will also be increased by a small change in V. So we, have, we are shading this area. Why do we shade it? We shall see in the next slide. So this is what I've said that let the charge on the A plate be increased from chu to small charge in chu. 
And how do you do that? By increasing the PD. So it implies the en energy supplied to put an extra charge or small change in Chu on the plates is equal to the area of the shaded strip. So that explains why we were shading this part, why this part was mm -hmm. sh shaded. To give you the energy supply to put an extra charge of small change in Chu onto the plates. So that small work done will be area. Now that area is the trapezium. If you look here, this shape, this shape is a trapezium. So the area will be a half H in brackets A plus B. So the H will be from here to here and the which is what? Which is small change in two. And A can be from here to here which is V and B can be from here to here which is V plus small change in V. So when you know that, we shall come here and get the area of a trapezium. So in this case, this will be the half, then this is A, this is B, and this is H. So what we are going to do, we are going to expand. When we expand, remember this is this and this is 2V plus small change in V. But remember, there is also a half outside. So this a half times 2V gives you V, which is here. But and also here, outside this bracket, there is another small change in Chu. That is why there is V times small change in Chu. Okay. Then there is also this a half times small change in V, which is here. But also outside the bracket, there is small change in Chu. That's what we put here. Then from there, remember this was equal sign, equal sign, but when it come here, it will be as approximately equal to this. Now, why is it so? It is because these are two small changes. For example, if you multiply 0 0.0005 times 0 0.00005, those are two small values, so they approximate to zero. That is why the whole of this approximates to zero. If you do principal math, you will realize you will be able to understand this under the topic of errors error or error propagation. But for now, just watch. But if you don't, just remember that these two small changes they approximate to zero. That is why you put an approximate sign to show that what you are remaining with will be only this. But I already know that V is equal to Q over C. So what I'm doing, I'm just rearranging. It implies that where there is this V, I'll come and put Q over C. But there's also this small change in Q, so to remain there. That is now small work done. What about the total work done? So to charge the capacitor from a zero charge up to a charge of capital Q, the total work done will be given by integration. So you integrate from 0 to capital Q of this small work done. But what you realize is that this was small change in Q, but now it, it, when you put an integral sign, it becomes d Chu, to mean that you are going to integrate with respect to Q. So when I integrate this Q, I'll come up with a half Q squared. So this is a half half is this two because of a half then this is two squared but there's also a c here so it will remain there i'm integrating from zero to two therefore substitute for capital Q where there is more Q to come up with this minus substitute for zero to give you zero so it would be this minus zero but it's, it's okay even not to put this minus zeros because it remains the same that is why you're only putting this as the output of the total work done. And like we say, the total work done is the same as is the energy stored. It implies that this formula is the formula for energy stored in a charged capacitor. But, but there is also another form. We can also express this formula in another form. So if you remember that Q is equal to CV, I'll come here and say, 
what will happen if I eliminate chu? So I'll come here and substitute for chu and come up with this formula. So this is also another way of expressing energy stored in a charged capacitor. So we have so first thing two expressions. And with those, we can go through these questions. So question one came from your name 2007, paper two, question 10b, and says, a capacitor is charged by a 30 volt DC supply. When the capacitor is fully charged, it is found to carry a charge of five micro coulomb. Calculate Roman one, the capacitance of the capacitor Roman 2, the energy stored in the capacitor. So for Roman 1, we shall first say that 2 is equal to CV. Therefore, when I substitute for chu and C, I don't know, then I know V, I'll be able to get my C. After getting C, that was, let me see Roman 1. Roman 1, they wanted the capacitance of the capacitor, so that's what they wanted. Then Roman 2, energy stored in the capacitor. Energy stored, we first called the formula. Then we substitute. We already got the C, so come and substitute for C and for V and use the calculator to come up with the energy stored. Energy stored is measured in joules. Then question 2 came from your name, 2013, paper 2, question 9C, and says, A capacitor of capacitance C is fully charged from 200 volt from a 200 volt battery. It is then discharged through a small coil of wire embedded in thermally insulated block of heat capacity 250 joules per Kelvin. If the temperature of the block rises by 0 0.4 Kelvin, calculate the value of C. So here we shall know that energy stored will be equal to the heat dissipated in the coil during discharge. Therefore, formula of energy stored in a capacitor is given by a half CV squared. And the heat dissipated, here they gave here we shall use heat capacity because in the question the question gave you joules per Kelvin. So that is heat capacity. If it was joules per kilogram per Kelvin, that would be specific heat capacity. But now because it is heat capacity, we are using C times change in temperature. Which is that. Therefore, you come and substitute a half. C we don't know is the one we are looking for. Then V we know it. Heat capacity we know and change in temperature we know it. So I think we realize that we have only one unknown. So our aim is to simplify and make C the subject. And that will be the answer they wanted. Then question 3 came from your name 2006, paper 2, question 10C, and says, The capacitance of a variable radio capacitor can be charged continuously from 10 picofarad up to 900 picofarad by turning the dial from 0 degrees to 140 degrees. With the dial set at 140 degrees, the capacitance is connected to a 9 volt battery. After charging, the capacitor is disconnected from the battery and the dial is turned to 0 degrees. Calculate Roman 1 the charge on the capacitor, Roman 2, the energy stored in the capacitor with the dial set at 140 degrees, and Roman 3, 
the work required to turn the dial from 140 degrees to 0 degrees if friction is neglected. So we shall start with Roman 1, the charge on the capacitor. So she shall come as that with a dial set at 140 degrees, capacitance is 900 picofarad. But remember, we have to convert to farad by multiplying by 10 to power negative 12. And the PD was 9 volt. That's what they told us. Therefore, it implies that charge will be CV. Come and sub substitute for C and for V to come up with this charge which they wanted. That was Roman 1. What about Roman 2? Roman 2, they want the energy stored in the capacitor with the dial set at 140 degrees. So initial energy stored is be given by a half CV squared. So when it is one forty we saw that when it is one forty degrees, capacitance is this, so that's what we substitute here, and V is this, so that's what we substitute there. And when you use the calculator, we shall come up with this as the answer. Then Roman four, or sorry, Roman three. The work required to turn the dial from 140 degrees to 0 degrees if friction is neglected. So with the dial set at, one, at 0 degrees, the capacitor is disconnected from the battery. What does that mean? It implies the final energy will be given by 2 squared over 2C. So the charge is this, and the capacitance is that. I think that's why we saw, we already know this formula. There are two formulas we got for energy stored. So yeah, we are using this. And the reason is because it was disconnected from the battery. That's why there is no V in this expression. So now use the calculator, I'll come up with this as the energy stored. But they want work done. So work done will be initial energy stored minus final energy stored. When I subtract the two, I'll be able to get the answer they wanted. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that this video will be on capacitance of an isolated charged sphere. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded. And also, if you know any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that you can all benefit as a family.